doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. If you know in your heart that you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, now is your time. There's no shame, no embarrassment. All of heaven rejoices when one person stands up. When one person comes forward and gives their life to Jesus, all of heaven rejoices. Thank you. 
beautiful. You are beautiful. You are chosen. You are loved. God made you this way. And it's absolutely perfect that God made you this way. Amen? Amen. You see that? Bless God. Perfect in every way. Perfect in every way. Perfect in every way. Amen? You are made in the likeness and image of God. And parents, we need to be encouraging our children that it's good to be unique and different. And it's okay. We don't have to try to be like everybody else. You can be just the way God made you to be. Amen? It's amazing what God can do and what He's going to do through this generation, guys. We believe in you. 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 I'm not just saying that. I believe in you. We believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. We believe in you. We believe in you. Love you guys. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we want to anoint these children with oil. And so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have Aaron start at that end. I'm going to start at this end. And we're going to pray a blessing over each and every one of these youth here. And if y'all could just come into agreement with us as we pray. This is, this is the unction of the Holy Spirit. This is what God is telling us to do. So y'all can pray with us. We're going to bless these children and we'll go on, on to the next thing, whatever God wants us to do.
the off the air. Yeah. 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 I was baptized, but I was only 
baptized in forgiveness. So last night when everybody was tired and it was time to go home, it just so happened <laughs> that God um, showed up and I got baptized last night in a tub of water outside. <laughs> freezing winter of Three years ago. 
ago. And they were joking. I they prayed for me for so many things. They prayed for my family, they prayed for my son. And I know that I can always count on them. Um, and I went to the Hope Revival earlier this summer. And um, Justin, of course, we prayed, prayed about a lot of things. And then Candice and I went out and they were just talking and I was telling her uh, um, I went to the doctor and I had a lot of health issues, which I, you know, they, most of them don't, don't, don't worry me because I'm not going to die from them. But they told me that I had a lot of high work. Scary thing because my mother, when she was 21, she had to have her thyroid removed. None of us realized we needed to know the facts. Unfortunately, she's gone. None of my sisters, none of us, we, we just know she had it out. So having this lump was really scary. Candice prayed with me, and she said, when you have that test, that is not going to be there, Linda. And by the grace of God, I thank you so much that it was gone. God has the final say. Amen. Your prayers are going to be answered. And I believe. 
heart with all my heart. And he also showed me today that who I am like yesterday, I knew they had knowledge. I read his word inside and out. But he revealed to me who I am. But not any of these labels that people put on me. He set me free. And today,
like this very moment is part of that really. And so Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. You're the teacher. Teach. Thank you. You glorify the man of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you feel that first song? This is my favorite message, y'all. Raise your hand if you've been to one of our youth cancer revivals. Shout out for day three. Day three, you, you know what happened on day three. Yeah, okay. This is, this is the real. I'm going to talk to you today about the believer's authority, and the subtitle of this is Release the Kingdom. I encourage you to take notes and pick this up the side. Because this is your destiny, this is your purpose, this is God's plan for you. And I just, I got up this morning early because I, did, because I can't wait to be with Jesus and hang out with him. It was about, I don't know, four, I don't know. And I, I, I sat in his presence for two hours weeping. Last night, I was blessed to preach on the goodness of God. And this morning, he was taking me back for, I was just thanking him for the opportunity to stand up here and steward his work for y'all. I've been abandoned, I've been abused, I've been raped, I've had addiction. I've had a teenage pregnancy. I have a list of things that happened to me. I lost custody of two of my children. And I've had enough of the devil doing his stuff. And God wants us to storm the gates of hell. See, I'm no longer on the defensive. The devil is attacking me. I get up out of bed and the devil's scared. <laughs> Come on. Because I know who I am and I know why I'm here. Amen. And it's not to be devoured by the darkness. It is to release the kingdom of God on this earth. Hallelujah. You ready? I just had to share that thing because God is good. All right, let's go. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And I pray for repentance in this room. I pray that your mind would be changed, that you will see something different than you ever saw before. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, you probably heard it said that this is the Great Commission. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There are so many pieces in this. First of all, Jesus came to them. This is Matthew 28. It's the last chapter of Matthew. The resurrection has already happened. The crucifixion of the resurrection has already happened. Right? It's the last thing he says. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore. Amen. Right? Amen. And do what? Make disciples of all nations. And I told you the other day that it, a disciple is not a convert, y'all. We weren't told to go get people saved, go make converts. We were told to make disciples. And if you look in John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus was talking to the Jews who believed, and he said, if you abide in my word, then you are a disciple. you got to get them saved and teach them to abide. Or if you don't know how to abide, this day you learn how to abide. That's what we're doing here. We're lingering. Right? We were staying in his presence. We were remaining there, waiting in this, this worship 
posture in our hearts. And then he said, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Okay, so there's pieces, parts you got to do there, and this says here, make disciples. Go make disciples, and what are we supposed to do? Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptize means completely immerse them. Yes, water baptized, but let's get completely immersed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's not just something you tap on the back of a prayer in Jesus' name. No. Find out. Dig in that word and find out everything that is in his name. Healing is in his name. Salvation is in his name. Deliverance is in his name. Peace is in his name. Holiness. Cleanliness. You find out. Baptize. Immerse yourself in his name. It's all that he paid for for you. Now, look, we're supposed to teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Well, how are you going to teach them to observe that if you don't know what he commanded you to do? You're going to replicate yourself. Okay? You're going to replicate yourself. And so I suggest following Jesus, hanging out with him so you become like him. So like Paul, you can say, follow me as I follow him. Right? Because you're going to make a disciple. People are, look, look around the little kiddos. They watch you, they're going to do what you do. Right? They're going to do what you do. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is super important. He's with you. We talked about this. This is why he died on the cross, so he could be with you and intimate with you, and that you would hear his voice and follow him wherever he leads you. He's got a really good plan. And the end of that is triumph. And we're supposed to be walking in triumph, but you've got to follow him. And if you go over here, that's not where the triumph is. He's saying, follow me, and it's here. Right? All right. Let's go. Keep going. Next slide, please. He wants you to go with him. Amos 3, 3 says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Guys, God wants you to get into agreement with him. Humility is agreeing with God. If he says the righteous are bold as a lion, amen, I'm bold as a lion. If he says I'm healed, I'm healed. But my body has a pain. It's lying. Okay? He wants, remember, lo, I'm with you always. He wants you to agree with him. How can you walk with him if you're in disagreement with him? I'm so depressed. Stop. Change your words. Depression is attacking me. But I'm delivered. See? Speak truth out of your mouth. It's okay to say, I have a pain in my foot. But by his stripes I was healed. You can speak the fact, man, but drop it with the truth. The truth changes the facts. You can say the doctor said that I have cancer, but God said I'm healed. Huh? Come on. Talk about your authority. Talk about releasing the kingdom, and it starts right here. You release the kingdom with your words. The power of death and life are in your words. What are you saying over your kids? I hear people in the grocery store, why are you such an idiot? Can't you do anything right? You're releasing death, man. You say that kid had a tantrum on the floor. Sweetheart, that's not who you are. That's not what we do. You speak destiny into you're, you're, you're fabulous, wonderful, self-controlled, loved by God the Most High. And they can still be riding on the floor, but man, speak life over them. Come on, there's power in your words. Agree with God, he says there's power in your words. Verse 7, look, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Let me tell you something, in the new covenant, that's you. What? 
John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. Prophecy is easy. Hear what he says and speak it. Mitchell, you heard something, you spoke it, and it's something that confirmed what somebody's already been speaking over you. He heard the healing, don't you? He heard from the Spirit, and he spoke it. Prophecy, easy button, man. Let's not complicate this. The gospel is easy enough for a child to hear it. Right? Come on. He reveals to his prophets what he wants to do. And you're one of the prophets. Now look at verse 14, John 15, verse 14. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Not everybody is his friend. Does he say, do not fear? Do whatever he commands. I love you. Does he say, don't worry? Do what he commands. Does he say, forgive? Do what he commands, man. Let's just get really radically obedient. God said it, I'm going to do it. Because I'm going to walk with him and I'm going to agree with him. And if he says forgive, by the Holy Spirit, I can forgive. I just make the decision. He says do all things without grumbling and complaining. I'm just saying. That's what he said. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me. Right? Now listen, verse 15, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. He's not hiding, he's not playing hide and seek. He gave you his spirit so he could reveal to you the things that have been freely given to you. We looked at that scripture yesterday. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to follow him. He wants you to release his words. He wants you to speak his truth. He wrote it all down in a book for you, and then he put his spirit in you to give you a revelation and an understanding of what he said. Okay? What are we talking about releasing the kingdom? It starts right here. It starts by agreeing with God, listening to what he says, speaking what he says. Oh, I've never heard his voice. Open your Bible. There's a whole lot of him talking right on there, didn't he? Okay? All right, let's go. He calls you his friend when you do whatever he commands. Do you remember what he said in the Great Commission? Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Where are you going to figure that one out? In the Word. In the Word and the Spirit. They always agree. Okay? We're talking about releasing the kingdom. That's why you're here. Go ahead, next slide, please. How do you release the kingdom? As you go, preach! Saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. I, don't, I only know two verses. Preach them. You've got a testimony. Anybody in here ever get saved? Let me see. If ever, you ever came up here because nobody wanted to get saved tonight. You can preach! I once was lost, but now I'm found. Come on. you got something to say that this world needs to hear. I once was hopeless, and now I have hope. I was suicidal. I got a testimony, man, that Jesus did it. Preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the... Dead, cleanse the lepers, have met one yet, but hey, cast out demons freely, you have received freely given. This is how I interact with the Word of God. What have I been freely given, Dad? What'd you give me? You see, you've got to ask him questions. This is the Word of God. He's speaking to you. What do you mean, Dad? What do you say? What was I freely given? I don't even know. Let's keep checking this out. Okay, let's check out the next scripture because he's going to show you. In Mark 6, 7, he called the twelve to himself. He began to send them out two by two. He gave them power over unclean spirits. That's the badge Justin talked about. It's the exousia. That word for power actually would be better if they put in the word authority. I've authorized you 
to cast out demons. Go. And as you go preach, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get out in Jesus' name. All right, I say it. There's teenagers. It's like flicking a booger, man. Get out. It's got to go. If they're sticky, get off. Jesus didn't wrestle with those boogers. Matthew 28, 18 is the same word. When Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, go. That's the transfer. You have been commissioned. You've been sent. Why did he say, all authority has been given to me, you go, and then he went up? Whoop, because he transferred it to you. He said, it's better that I go. Because if I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Boom. Right now, I'm up in there. All right, let's see the next one. So here's the thing. He said, preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, that makes me ask him a question. What is the kingdom of heaven? Guys, ask the questions. Ask the questions. If you ask him the questions, what's he going to do? Answer. Ask, and it shall be given. If you don't ask, he's the, yeah, I want to get his tongues. You got to ask. Whew, there you go, tongues. Right? So I go, Dad, what's the kingdom of heaven? Romans 14, 17. We'll answer that question. I love this. <laughs> Jesus is the answer. Every question you have, Jesus has the answer. He'll give it to you at the right time. When you're ready to store it. When you're ready to handle it. And when you're really listening. And when you're really ready to hear, not the answer you want to hear, but his answer. Because this is best. <laughs> Let's go. What is the kingdom of heaven? Because he wants us to release it. And I'll show you why I think that, because I found it in the word. What is the kingdom of heaven? Well, here's what it's not. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Three things. The kingdom of heaven is, repeat it with me. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom. And you've been commissioned to go and preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I should be emoting, exploding, and releasing righteousness, peace, and joy over all y'all. Do you ever meet an angry Christian? Forget that. We'll come back to this. <laughs> okay, next one. I'm just saying, hey, today you are releasing your hmm, all of you. I'm just saying. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And you're a kingdom citizen. Let me tell you then, where is the kingdom? Okay? I asked him a lot of questions. That's how I got his answers and stuff. And then he says, go teach them what I teach you. And that's all I'm doing. And he said, now... When he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come without observation, nor will they say, See here? Or see there? No. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Touch it. Touch your heart. Touch it. The kingdom of God is within you. Pop quiz, what are the three things? The kingdom of God is? Righteousness, peace, joy, and Holy Spirit. You got it. Y'all told me you were saved. You got kingdom inside of you. Stop trying to get it. He wants you to get it out. You done got it. At the very end yesterday, I gave you a lesson. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, or something. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Sounds like righteousness, peace, and joy. Through the knowledge of Him. So you got it, now we need to release it. So that the world may see and know that He is real and He's alive. I'm here <laughs> right now. Right? So what is the kingdom? Righteousness, peace, Joy, where is the kingdom? Inside. In me. And let's get it out. My next question. How do you know? 
Just keep asking the questions, man. Next one, please. So John 20, verses 21 and 22. Jesus said to them again, peace to you. Do you know, anybody know how many chapters uh, John has? Don't be looking. Pop quiz. What? 21. Okay? He already was crucified, risen again. He goes to see his disciples in those 40 days, you know what I'm saying, before he went up and all that stuff. And Justin talked about this the other day. It's so cool. Right? He said to them and to his disciples, peace to you. Remember what that peace is? Wholeness. Right? All the pieces, parts, put that together. <sighs> so good. Peace to you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. <sighs> and he said, receive. But here's the thing. He said something else in Acts 1.8. We'll get there in a minute, but I want to say in the Gospels for a second. Okay? Because he said before, freely you have received, freely give. What did they freely receive? The circle, the Holy Spirit. What is the kingdom? Are you buckling? Are you buckling? Is it going? Is it going? Is it? Okay, right? Freely you have received, freely give. I receive the Holy Spirit. The grieves on them. Okay? Anything you do, you do with him by his power because it's his will. Because he said so. Go, preach, heal the sick, praise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received. The Holy Spirit, the kingdom, freely give. You want to see some really cool stuff? I, I found some really cool stuff in this word. Let's go. What's the next one? Huh. John 14, 12 to 14. Most assuredly, he's always like, verily, verily, I say that to be. He all has to repeat it so you really get it. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who, I need you to read that word, he who, he who, he who believes. Yeah, ticket. <laughs> ticket to release him. Believe. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Okay, amen. Humble yourself, agree with him. Mm. And greater works than these will he do. Glory to God. Did Jesus say that? Yes, he did. Because I go to my Father. He went to the Father. Why was it better? Because then you get the Holy Spirit. And then you can pray your works. That's why you're here. It's your purpose. And whatever you ask in my name, do. Come on. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Have you read these promises? That's big. Big, mega big. Big promise. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, I can't preach this message tonight, but man, dig in the Word and find out what's in His name. This is a promise. All of His promises are yes and amen. All, I read that. Right in the Word. He can't lie. Uh -huh. He can't lie. Let's keep going. There's so much more. What's John 17, 15 to 20 say? Okay? Check this out, y'all. Because Justin and I had this funny conversation. If the only purpose of salvation was to get you to heaven, should I even do it? <laughs> if that was the only reason for you to get saved was to get to heaven, listen carefully. Then why don't we just get saved and die? Because it's not the only purpose, y'all. We're here on a rescue mission. 
The same mission Jesus was on when his Holy Spirit was in his own body. It's the same Holy Spirit, and he's still here seeking to save that which was lost. He's on a rescue mission to get his kids back. And all you got to do is believe, and you walk with him, you go with him. He says, go over here. And he highlights somebody, and you start ministering to them, and bam! Something happens, right? So i got to get to that part, how that happens. But you just got to know that you have a purpose on this earth. It's not to get healed or get delivered. You've done God healed, you got delivered the day you got saved. Get your mind renewed, get an agreement, and go! Make disciples. Release the kingdom. How? Why? Listen to what Jesus prayed in John 17. I do not pray. Can, can, did, did the Father say yes to Jesus' prayers? Do you think they were in agreement? <laughs> if Jesus prayed this, the Lord said yes. Amen. Let it be so. And he spoke this over you. Some people be like, that was for them. Hold on, read verse 20 with me. First of all, Jesus said, I do not pray that you take them out of the world. You don't want to take them out of here yet. <laughs> but that you keep them from the evil one. Can I tell you, you are kept from the evil one. Well, wait a minute here. Look at this happened and that happened. Read Psalm 91. And agree and meditate it and agree and confess it until it becomes your reality. Because he's keeping you from the evil one, y'all. He's got to believe truth instead of lies. They are not of the world, y'all, not of this world. Just as I am not of the world, sanctify them by your truth. Sanctification is the process of renewing your mind. Remember when Justin had three chairs up here, your spirit is righteous, holy, good, and all that God says that you are, your soul needs some renewing of the mind so that it can agree with the spirit that came in to live inside of you instead of your body that used to rule and reign over you before you were saved. Watch last night's video, just in public. Okay? Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. As you sent me, Jesus, into the world, I send them into the world. Now watch. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified, mind renewed. Romans 12, 2. So that your mind agrees with your spirit, your in unity. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amos 2, 3. You need to be sanctified by truth. Let this word that is alive and active change the way you think so that it gets in alignment with what God did inside of you and then you speak truth and you're the light that invades the darkness and you release the kingdom on the earth. That's his plan. That's his plan. And look, this is how I believe it's for me and you and all y'all. All y'all. Verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Anybody believe the word now? And we're reading the word that the apostles wrote and that their disciples wrote. That's me. I believe in it now. He prayed that for me. Let's go. Next verse. All right. Here's what happened. He breathed the Holy Spirit on them. Then, like Justin told us, he said, wait, don't go yet. Wait. And in Acts 1 it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And this is a different word than exousia. This is dunamis, man. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. You will be my witnesses in Deckerville, Michigan, the United States, and here. Come on, let's go. Now look, dunamis is the gun. It's the miraculous power for the healing, right? Salvation, man, that's, that's a powerful thing. But the miracles, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, you've been given the badge and the gun. You've been given the authority, and you've been given the power to do it. You just need to believe that that's really what you were called to do. See, if the police officer was in here, right, and somebody's trying to break in, 
And the police officer calls the office and says, hey, somebody's trying to break in. What should I do? They could be like, arrest him! And then come in and turn your badge and fight. <laughs> he was hired to do a job, y'all. He's got the badge. You don't need to call for permission. Right? You've got the badge. You've got the exusia. You've got the authority. He gave it to you, and he gave you the gun. Do it by faith. His grace is released by faith. Look at Romans 5, 1 to 5, a young time, because i got to get going here. I want to show you a story in Acts 3. And I'll do it real quick. I won't, I won't read the whole thing, but here's the, here's the second stage. Okay? There's a late guy, and he's a... Uh, crippled in his legs, and he's always sitting at the temple, and he's begging for money by everybody who goes in. Okay? Now, this is Acts chapter 3. Y'all remember what Peter did when they asked him in uh, before the cross? Hey, weren't you one of those disciples of Jesus? What do you do? No! I call him chicken butt. No! That wasn't, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He denied it how many times? Three. And then this is after Acts 20, and this is after the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. He repented, man, and changed his mind. Why? Because he had the badge of hand of him, and he was given the authority. So this guy's sitting on the steps, and he's like, can I have money? Can I have money? He's crippled, man. He's crippled. He's asking for all his money. Now watch. Fixing his eyes, the eyes of the Lord to the soul. Fixing his eyes on him. With John, Peter said, look at us. He said, Peter's so cool now. He was chicken butt before. <laughs> now he's so cool. Look what he did. He's like, so this guy, right, he's expecting some, some money or something, right? I can just picture this. He's like, oh, I need some money. No, 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 no. Peter's so cool, filled with the Holy Spirit. He walks up, he's like, look at me. <laughs> and then he goes, Silver and gold I do not have, but that which I have I give to you. Get up and walk. For boom. What did he have? The badge and the gun. The exchange. Peter didn't call up to heaven, Lord, is it okay? No! Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus already said, go, go. Heal the sin, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have been given, freely give. And Peter knew what he had. He knew what he had. He had the badge and he had the gun. He says, silver and gold, I don't got that, but that which I have, I give to you. Boom! <sighs> That's you. That's you. That's you. Come on, what good are these revivals if we're not going to build these kingdom? Don't just sit here and get excited. Get moved by the Spirit. To release the king and invade the darkness with your light. Oh, the devil, let's go. All right, I'm getting there. Go ahead. Uh, babe, will you give me a uh, number five? What? I'll probably borrow it from one of We'll go quick. All right, I'm just going to show you a couple things you've got to dive into this. Okay? You've got the badge, you've got the gun, and I'm going to go really quick through this. I'm going to show you where to find it when you dig in. Okay, sit on Daddy's lap and go, show me, show me. I want to use my badge and my gun. <laughs> Ain't no cake ball there, I mean. Listen, from Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. Okay? I don't want you to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. Okay? What do you do with a gift? <laughs> what? Give her away! <laughs> That was a bad question, sorry about that. Okay, wrong week, <laughs> erase, rewind that thing. Okay, so the gifts, the spiritual gifts, right? God, agape love is a one-way arrow. God so loved the world, he? Okay, now you're going to be like him, and you're going to release the kingdom that goes out. Okay, so you want to get a gift from him to give out. This is how we release the kingdom. All right? I'm not digging into this because I got a title going on. Just because I'm good to say. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. One spirit. Say same spirit. Same spirit. There are differences in ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, 
that it is the same God, the same God, who parted the Red Sea, huh? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, flame and fire and all that good man now. Daniel and all, same God. Same God lives in you. Same God. Gotta cause the virgin to be pregnant. I gotta, I gotta tell this story. Just a little secret thing. I was with the little fifth graders and they had to meditate a verse right before Christmas. This is literally hilarious. And I'm like, oh, what did you see in the verse? And he opens up his little book and he said, and Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I am yet a vegan. <laughs> I said, that's right, honey. <laughs> so y'all not allowed to eat meat. <laughs> I'm still <getting> married. <laughs> I love kids. All right. Same God who works all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Dude, didn't it benefit you to hear? Oh, my God, he raptured. There you go. Anyway, it benefits people to hear a word of prophecy. It benefits all. Next one real quick. Okay? So there's lots of gifts. They're different. Here's the thing. I'm not going to teach these. We don't have time. Dig into them. But you can get a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, uh, faith, healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. But, verse 11, one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Okay? It's God's will for you to wear the badge and shoot the gun, and he's going to give you the gift for the person standing in front of you. He knows what it is. You don't need to know. That's none yet. That's none yet business. Just give it. He'll give it to you if you give it out. The more you release, the more you'll get. So flow. Okay? You're going to keep it all for yourself? Dude, if you're the UPS guy and you keep that package, guess what? You get fired. All right? You the donkey. Just you the UPS guy. Just deliver the stuff. Okay? Now, real quick, you've got to see this. Next slide. 1 Corinthians 12, 31. That's the end of 1 Corinthians 12. Dive in there and see all about the gifts. 